All right, boys and girls, welcome back to my flat, my flat like YouTube channel. Uh, this next uh, little segment here is going to be on putting together and assembling my crankshaft along with the connecting rods with their bearings and the proper connecting rod bolts and nuts. It's pretty important to understand now also that this crankshaft has been recertified. It's been mag uh, it's been Magnaflux inspected. It's had the Connecting rod journals turned down to 20 under. The main journals have turned to 10 under. Now this modification, turning the 20 under, that, that was not certified to begin with, so it's important that you use Aircraft Specialty Services special main bearings uh, for this. Otherwise, the entire process is null and void with what we're doing here. So the other aspect of this is that the connecting rods are to be installed on the engine with the numbers facing up, the numbers such as these, right there, facing up, when the crankshaft is laid inside the cylinder hatch. All right? I don't know if you can see the cylinder, the case, the engine case or not, but when the case halves are in there, you want these numbers facing up. So, uh, what I'm gonna do here is begin getting these connecting rods ready by sticking some bearings in there for them. Here's some fancy little bearings that go there. These are the approved ones per the supplemental type certificate which is issued for this modification to the engine. It's legal and technical BS, but it is what it is. We're going to live with it. We want to ensure that this little engine has a long and happy life. Of course, the way I drive it, <coughs> I wind up tearing this engine apart about every couple of years for some reason or another, whether I need to or not, just because. Just because I've done something silly. Anyway, these are all snap fit, and again, these have been cleaned really well and thorough, so that the cleaning that I've done now is to just simply ensure that that there are no contaminations inside the engine. It can cause me to have to prematurely disassemble it again. So these little bearings, they pretty much are kind of idiot proof, but I could probably figure a way to screw it up. But you see the little slot here, the bearings have a little slot there. They somewhat snap into position there. And it's almost foolproof there, unless you don't get it lined up proper, like I just did. So there you go, now she snapped into place, all right? One more to go, and then we'll be about ready to start presenting our connecting rods to the crankshaft. It's also pretty important to verify that the owner holes are properly aligned. You see the little holes in the middle here? That they're properly aligned with the oiler squirt holes on the connecting rod. Uh, on the connecting rod cap, that is. Not real good at this, but by the time I finish this engine, I might be pretty decent at it. I don't know. All right, now I've got this all squared away because I know that the engine is built up number one cylinder, number two cylinder. I hope you can see this. Number three and number four. This is number one right here. This will be number two. This will be number three, and this will be number four. My connecting rods are marked on the ends there, so it's not real. It's pretty difficult to screw this up. Anyway, it is recommended, highly recommended, that you use new bolts, new connecting rod bolts upon assembly. And I just so happen to have a whole bunch of brand new Franken new ones right here that I will be using. In addition to the bolts, I will also use new nuts as well. So one, it's going to take me two of these per cylinder, per, per connecting rod. So I'll just get these guys ready. Get them ready to go here. I've got a handy little brass hammer here too in the event that they need a little persuasion going on with each of the cylinders or each of the uh, rod journals. Crank journals, if you will. All right, two brand new spanking new bolts. And those go in from this end. Now, I may 
event that you need a little persuasion, I highly recommend you use something like a, a brass hammer. But me and my little luck here, I got lucky and don't need it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. I'm getting on the rod bolts squared away here. Brand spanking new ones. Still have the cosmoline on there. Cosmoline's preserved it, I reckon. <clears throat> that one didn't want to go on so well. That means it's a good tight fit. Now again, like everything else, when you get these together, it is very important that you use a calibrated certified torque wrench. Those little wire torque wrenches, the ones with the little spring wire on there, yeah, they're good for working on your lawnmower, but I don't recommend using them on the airplanes. Now, when I'm talking about airplane building engines here, you know, I think it's kind of, I think everybody ought to do it at least once. Uh, especially you home builders out there building airplanes. You know, it's kind of a shame, in my opinion, to sit there and watch you guys spend 2,000 hours building an airplane, building an airframe. you got this gorgeous little airplane out there, but you have somebody else build the engine. I mean, I don't get that part of it, but uh, evidently Superior, Superior doesn't get it either because they offer an engine building school. For those of you that would like to touch base with them, you can find them on their webpage. And by the way, this is a brass hammer. Needs a little persuasion, so I'll just offer up <clears throat> persuasion in the form of a hammer. Oh yeah. <clears throat> a little tight on that one too there, baby. So we'll just beat it to fit. Later we'll come back and paint it to match. How do you like that? Dang it. I really do know what my tools are, but I'm not sure how come I can't get one in this toolbox here. Okay. Got a little caddy wonky set, so now. Okay. There's. Alright, one go. It is hot in here, but I turned it ceiling fans off just because the noise coming over the GoPro and I realized that the volume over the GoPro is pretty pretty low also because of the housing it's got on there. But here we go again. One more to go. And that's going to look pretty good right there. A little persuasion. Twist a little bit because I got the candy wampus there. Twist just enough to go down. Smack it one more time. We'll beat it to fit and paint it to match like I said a minute ago. How do you like that? Okay, so now, number one, coming up here on the top. The crankshaft's looking really good. I've cleaned it all out. I cleaned it again just before I got started on this process here. I'm going to get another wipe down of it, make sure I don't leave any rag residue on here because. I'm going to start the assembly process here and I'm going to goober it up pretty good with some of this. Now this stuff here, it dissolves in the engine oil, but what we do want to make sure we have is a good lubrication before the engine, when the engine starts up initially, before it begins to develop oil pressure. So we're going to go ahead and give her a bath here with some of this good old handy dandy engine build lubricant. plate. That's what this stuff was designed for. And so this is connecting rod, more than a one cylinder. Now again, I said the numbers on the end of the connecting rod have to be faced up when the crankshaft is laid in there. So if I'm looking at this crankshaft laying it in there, I want my numbers facing you guys out there on the, on the camera. And so here we go. This is number one going together right here. And make sure I got both sides. It's also prop important to orient the, the connecting rod as the rod eye cap with the rest of it. Just like that. We've got the pieces stuck together. Now we're going to bring ourselves a couple of brandy stinking new nuts over here. And if I can find my razor blade, I'll get a couple of them out. Again, this is all new hardware on the connecting rod. It's very important these things take a lot of stress. So, we'll make sure she has the proper hardware to do the job with and make sure it'll last a long time. Okay, now, I'm just going to run these up snug so that we've got this 
squared away real quick. Oops, I got these Conrod bolts already going sideways in there on me. Go figure, would you? until I get my torque wrench out and do all that part of, part of it. I just do want to keep them together though so that the, the, rod bearing, the rod bearings are intact. Okay, there's number one. Now the next one will be number two. Look and verify my numbers, say number two, number two. Here we go again. Just a generous amount of lubrication. Again, like you said, you don't want these things to start up dry. The lubricant plate is designed for this and dissolves and is soluble in engine oil, so it will dissolve and be completely gone uh, in no time. But it ensures we get a good clean start on the engine. Okay, now I want my rod caps and my numbers to be all facing the same way, and that is the way they go right there and right there. So I just go ahead and slip these two little puppies together. Uh oh. Um, cause my connecting rod, my bearing to come off. And in doing so, looks like I got a little bit of shop towel contamination in here. Didn't mean to, but I did. At least that's what it looks like to me. So it is a little fuzzball there, it came off the finger. Alright, here we go again. One on one, this is two. Too, making sure all the cap ends are lined up. Like I said, those numbers are on that side on there for a reason. Now I'll try to cinch this together. If not, I'll have to persuade it a little bit with my hammer. That, by the way, is made out of a chunk of brass, by the way. Something didn't happen right. Rod cap come apart again. The bearings got misaligned in there. Not once, but twice already. It's very important that you pay attention to what you're doing, boys and girls. Otherwise, you can wind up with a self-inflicted uh, problem. Okay, that one's back in its position. And this one is back where it goes. So we'll give it another try. Sometimes it's just very stubborn that way. Number two. Number two. There we go. Number two and number two. Aha! Okay. I like that much better. We've got a nut over here. We've got a nut over here. Keep in mind, this is Monday, the week before Oshkosh 2014. 
and I intend to fly this little airplane to Oshkosh, departing next Sunday from Texas. So I got about an 800 mile flight on a brand new spanking new engine. So my suspicion is by the time I come home, this little puppy will be just about half broke in. That is, if I get her put together in time to go. Here we go. I'm just cinching these up again to remember right now. I'll come back and put the torque wrench to them in a few minutes. But right now, I simply want to get them all prepared and in position so that all my new pieces are where they belong. It is toasty here in Texas in uh, July. However, I understand we've had a pretty good summer. It hasn't been over 100 degrees, but once or twice this year already. And, uh, but I wouldn't know that because I haven't been here. I've been on the road, which is why here I am a week before Oshkosh building up the evening. Sometimes work gets in the, in the way of play. And I would have to classify this, even though I'm doing something that looks like work to some folks. I kind of enjoy this. This is like play to me. So anyway, I will continue on. This will be connection rod number three. It's going to go on the engine along with its rod cap. And I know that that has to go on this connect this journal down here. I also know that my numbers are supposed to go up, which will be that way. And I want this other one to show up. And that was there. So, okay, here we go on this one now. Nice little love taps, nothing hard about it, no sense in beating it on there. It doesn't want to be beat on there. If it was a beat me on, we'd have to paint it to match and bondo it to suit us and then paint it to matches later. But anyway, here we go. And by the way, all the dimensional checks I've already run to verify these were within the tolerances. You know, it's, uh, I trust these engine shops when I send stuff out to them, but seeing and believing when you get it back, I have seen stuff mislabeled before. Okay, one more to go, and we will be in good shape here. By the way, I'm leaking again, dead gum. I don't know what it did, pinch my finger or something. Getting to be a regular occurrence around here. One to go. Four needs to go on that side, facing that way. Whoops. Little bearing's trying to pop out of his position there. Four will go there. there it is. And the other number matches up on this side perfectly. Here we go. Oh, yes, by the way, in case any of you guys are wondering, uh, I am a certified airframe power plant mechanic. Uh, so I have done this a few times in the past.
All right, and there we have it. We now have a crankshaft that when I take this and lay into my crankcase halves, you can see that all my numbers are facing up, which is where they're supposed to be. They all move and slide freely. So now I'm gonna take the torque wrench to it. Again, it's very important. Don't be complacent and use one of those silly old cheap ones from the, uh, from the local hardware store because they're not adequate, they're not ac accurate. And I really highly suggest that you get your tools calibrated if you're going to do this kind of work. Now, if I can find the right kind of combination of extensions here, I'll be in great shape. Of course, now my hands are all, sort of all slippery from grease, so I need to come up with something. Oh, I'll put the top on here, too. step this down to a quarter inch so I can just fix out of here. So a little handy dandy pair of pliers will do it. It should. There we go. Okay, that ought to do me, that ought to set me up right there. Alright, now these require some pretty high torque values with respect to inch pounds. They use 400 to 475 inch pounds right there for the Conrad bolts. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to move them all up with the uh, engine oil, which is what it requires and what it asks for before you torque them. So, backwards we go again. At least I caught it. I'm not using any other lubrication other than engine oil for this. So, since I got them all cinched down, I'll stay in place while I do a quick loop job on it. Again, they also say and recommend that you only use these connecting rod bolts once along with the nuts, which is why I've gone to the expense necessary to get all the proper stuff for this poor little engine. See, that's why I have the book over here handy with me while I'm doing stuff. I can read the book and study it and understand it and remember a lot of stuff, but occasionally I forget something. And in trying to come up with whatever dialogue I was going to try to feed to you guys, I forgot something. So, I'm going to get my little can over here, which is right here. I'm just going to put a little dribbling of oil on each one with my little finger, and then we'll come back. Okay, there's some here. There you go on that one. There you go down here. Yeah, this is where you kind of make a little bit of a mess. It's a clean mess, but it's a mess nonetheless. And pardon the looks of my shop too here, by the way, because I have not been here very much. Uh, in fact, this whole year I've been out quite a bit doing what I do best. I'm not sure what that is, but I'll just let y'all guess. And the shop towel over here. Now I'm going to thread these things back on, and we'll start torquing up. And this is why we got that high torque value there. And it says to keep them lubricated with engine oil. Lubricate these bolts with engine oil prior to torque. It gives a little better slipping effect. It doesn't allow the bolts to be dry and kind of hang up in the threads, if you will. So anyway, this isn't exactly the best engine stand in the world. It's a homemade one that I made out of a, a wheel and a chunk of pipe because I was in a hurry and I didn't have time to go buy one or fabricate one proper. Really didn't need much of a stand anyway because this little engine doesn't weigh all that much. But it's something I came up with and it works. And I'm a happy camper for that. So 
There we go again. And it takes less room in the hanger too. It doesn't take a whole lot of space. That's an important thing for any of you guys have hangers out there. And you know, space becomes a premium. One of my neighbors over there, his wife says, well, we don't, uh, we don't throw anything away. We've got a hanger. <laughs> well, <clears throat> unfortunately, that's the way a lot of people think. But your hanger gets full up with stuff that you really don't want in your hanger. All right, now we're dialed in. Back to where I was a minute ago. Sorry for the delay, boys and girls. Uh, but it's 400 to uh, 475 inch pounds. I've converted that down to 33 to uh, 37 foot pounds, which is what I'm going to apply to it here uh, with my handy dandy big old torque wrench. Somewhere along the line, my other torque wrench disappeared. My 3 8 drive, but I don't know. Probably went to a good cause, I hope. Okay. Now we're getting there. I'm bringing them up even too as I go. That's pretty tight. All right. There's number one is done. It is free on, on the crankshaft. Number three. It's also pretty important too to note that when you're using a torque wrench, use it by the handle out here on the end because that's where the leverage is coming from and that's how the thing is calibrated. If you choke up on it, you're not applying the same value as you would be if you were out here on this. You got a little more leverage here, le more leverage out here than you do here. So that's the way it's designed to be used. And there's number three, number four coming up. Yeah, baby. Hey, I'm liking that. Okay. Uh, I also have a pretty good habit of unwinding my torque wrench when I'm done. These tools are pretty expensive these days, and you don't really want to ruin them for no good reason at all. So I highly recommend you do the same. Okay. That one is undone, and I'm ready to put this back up. Go get my cotter pins, put them in there, slap the crankshaft seal on there. In fact, I'd probably go ahead and do that now. I'm not going to put the crankshaft in the housing just yet because I need a little bit of more work to do here. But it's good and moist. It's easier to put this on before. Oh, darn. It's easier to put this on before you have the crankshaft in the crankcase house in the crankcase simply because you have a whole lot less clearance and a lot room a lot less room to work while you're doing so. so I'm just going to lubricate the nose of this piece here a little bit with some engine oil. Try not to get too much of it on the outside edges there because I am going to come pookie that in. If there's anything that's going to leak on this thing generally going to be this crankshaft seal and that dog on oil is going to wind up on the windshield and that's the frustrating part of that. So at any rate I'm going to go ahead and slip this little dumpling onto the crankshaft down here where it goes. It's a split seal. I'm going to slip it on over here just like so. Now the real fun part is this piece here. This is the spring. This applies tension to that crankshaft seal and makes sure that it is kept on there. And it keeps a nice tension around the crankshaft itself. So if I can manage to get this on there without screwing anything up, I'll be a happy camper. And let me 
me see where is the end of it. That end goes this way, that end goes that way. Tough little road, yeah. It's really tough when you get over, boys and girls. You can't see what you're doing. Take good care of those eyes, because you're going to need them later. Now, in order to get that spring seated in here, I'm going to go ahead and run around this with this handy dandy little hook that will help get this thing properly seated on the, on the inside the seal which will maintain its tension on the crankshaft and prevent any crankshaft oil seals in the future. Oil seal leaks that is. falling into place there. Okay, go around here double, one more time just to double check with the heel of this so that I don't poke any, inflict any damage on, on the uh, seal itself or insert or inflict any damage to the uh, any scoring or anything on the crank shaft itself, which would be a real bummer, especially since I just got this thing. rocking now boys and girls all right now let me show you what I did here okay so when this thing goes together in this crank in this crank case you're gonna see it going in there up the crankshaft will lay down like so in there I've got my numbers facing up cylinder number one cylinder number two cylinder number three cylinder number four Little continental start on the back right with cylinder number one and number two. And uh, uh, number one, number two is on the left. Number three is on the right. Number four is on the on the left as well. So the next process here will be to uh, stick my cotter pins in here. Once I'm done with that, I will prepare the case, and we'll put the case halves together with our crankshaft and our camshaft. So anyway, from our world headquarters up here, Arrow Country. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Thanks.